Welcome to this panel for the Kung Fu Show on the CW. I want to thank Cape and the CW for hosting it. My name is Keith Chow with the Nerds of Color, and I am here with the amazing cast and creator of Kung Fu on the CW. It's the Shen family reunion. Welcome to the panel, Christina Kim. She is the co-showrunner of Kung Fu. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, Christina. Also joining is Olivia Leung. She plays Nikki, the hero of the show. Hello. Woohoo. Shannon Dang is Nikki's sister, Althea. Please welcome to this panel. Hi. <laughs> John Persida plays her brother, Ryan. How you doing, John? What's up? What's up, man? How you doing? All right. And then we have the parents. Ty Ma plays Jin, her father. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> and her mother, King Hua Tan, Mei Li, on the show. Welcome to the panel, everybody. Hello. Nice to be here. Yay, good morning. Thanks for having us. I'm excited to have the entire Shen family on the panel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> our our alternate um, title for Kung Fu would be Nikki and the Shens. Nikki and the Shens? I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's a great title. It's a band well, name. I think what, one of the things that's really exciting about this show is the fact that it's almost like a reclamation in a way because, you know, the show has a has a toward history in Asian America film and pop culture history uh, because it's it's one of the ones that always gets kind of lumped in with the uh, whitewashing problem because David Carradine famously played the lead. So Christina, when you were tasked with bringing the show into the 21st century, how cognizant of, were you of that fact and, and how much did you want to reclaim the title of Kung Fu for the Asian American community? Oh, I was very, very aware. Um, when I was approached to reboot this, you know, this classic show, really, it was very important to me that I reframe the show, that I do a couple things. One, obviously, was that the lead had to be played by an Asian person, a fully Asian person. And then the second thing that I really wanted to do was to have a really strong female lead. So those were the two, my two sort of imperatives. And, you know, the studio was 100% behind that and supported me. So once I had that support, then I could create the Shen family and have a lot of fun with creating all the family dynamics. But I was really excited, you know, to, to bring the show into the modern era and to, to represent. And Olivia, when you were cast, first of all, I know one of the things that any Asian American actor has to contend with is this notion of like, martial arts right in fact there's like a whole generation of actors who like refuse to play martial arts roles how excited were you to take on this considering what christina said about the notion of kung fu being a reclamation of of this cultural identity that that was stolen from asian americans for a long time yeah i was definitely in the camp of the asian american performer who didn't want to fall into the typecast or the stereotype of only being a martial artist. Um, so yeah, I was definitely like, I'm not gonna learn martial arts because I don't <laughs> need that in order to have a successful career. Um, but obviously once I got the part of Nikki and I did my due diligence of, of looking up the history of the show cause it was a little bit before my time, I suddenly felt very empowered. I was like, yeah, let's, let's do this the right way, the way that it should have been done the first time. And you know, the, the special thing about this show is that, you know, the problem of the of the typecast and the stereotype of martial arts was never the fact that we were doing martial arts because it's a beautiful part of our culture and the tradition of um, Asian history. But the problem in Hollywood was that we were cast to just pop onto screen throw a couple punches and then leave. We didn't know anything about that character, didn't know the, that full character's story. But in our show, you're gonna get to see what we're all fighting for. And it just puts so much more meaning behind these, behind the martial arts. And um, and I just feel really badass when I do it also. <laughs> <laughs> she does martial arts great. She's a punk <laughs> master, you would never, Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm no I, I love that explanation because I've always said for a long time that the problem with the martial arts stereotype is not the art itself, right? It's as you said, it's the fact that Asian Americans in particular are only cast as the cannon fodder or like the wise master who gets murdered 
but not the actual hero of the show. So it's great that not only is the hero of the show an Asian character, but you're surrounded by entire support system. And, you know, Shannon and John, you kind of also play quote unquote stereotypes. You're the med student and the tech whiz. But again, you get to flesh out these quote unquote stereotypes with real character. How did it feel to be, you know, part of this cast, part of this story, knowing that you're playing Asian American med student, Asian American tech whiz, but being able to add personality and dimension to those quote unquote stereotypes? Um, for, uh, for, for me, um, uh, it's, whew, I, I feel like an absolute sort of like, um, privilege and honor to be able to represent that side, but also like, you know, the, the LGB side as well, um, of, of Ryan's character. Um, because I have quite a, a few friends who've gone through that experience. And I have one friend in particular who had like, unfortunately, a, a, a sort of a worse outcome for, for, um, than than Ryan when it comes to uh, sharing, you know, something like coming out with your parents. And I think it's super important for that to be seen, to be visible to the Asian community, because um, that the ability to share your life with your parents is invaluable. And I feel like a lot of time is wasted worrying about, oh, is my son or daughter going down a path that like, it, it's, it's, super, I, I, I want to say arbitrary to be worrying about. Um, and by giving visibility to, to, to this side of the story, um, in particular, in, sorry, in particular Ryan's story, uh, I think is something that um, parents of Asian families could learn from. And also um, anyone in Ryan's shoes could resonate with and be like, oh man, I feel seen. Like, I feel like, mm. um, I feel like someone understands me. Yeah, and um, I love what JP said. I, I feel like Kung Fu does a great job of, yes, maybe we have these stereotype um, qualities as far as, you know, tech whiz and med student, but we are fully fleshed out characters. Um, I know from the beginning when I read Althea, I could totally see myself in her. Not maybe the tech genius part, definitely not, <laughs> but like the other things as far as her dynamics with her siblings and her parents and um, she's very lighthearted. She's planning her wedding. Like these, uh, she just uh, got engaged to her dream fiance. I'm not engaged, but I, all <laughs> the things that she's going through, there are so many, um, uh, relatable qualities and uh, her journey. And I, I find that that's the same thing with every character, which is really nice that people are gonna be able to see not just stereotypes, but these are fully fleshed out human beings, a fully fleshed out family with uh, universal problems that we all families go through. You know, there's love, heartbreak, pain, healing. And um, I think it's beautiful and I can't wait to share all of those lovely colors. I think that's great. And I, you know, the, the whole notion of like quote unquote Asian stereotypes in Hollywood has always been, to me felt like just an excuse to not cast Asian people, right? Cause it's like, why, why can't Asian people play doctors and martial artists and tech geniuses if they're playing human beings? Cause that's ultimately the difference, right? Like if you're a white actor, you can play a tech genius or a superhero or a martial artist and be a human being. But for some reason, if you put an Asian person in that role, it's like, oh, well, that's a stereotype. Mm -hmm. And what's beautiful about this show is that like these types, like any fiction, any drama has types. That's the whole point of writing fiction, right? Like these are all archetypes. But putting Asian faces to those characters shows that Asians can be these things and also be human. And that's the thing that's been missing in Hollywood for generations is that Asians have never been human. <clears throat> There's two points to be made here, really, right? And I'm not talking about the color of your skin, okay? I'm talking about the knowledge of who we are. And this person, Christina Kim, happens to know and have the knowledge of who we are. Mm -hmm. That's the major difference, okay? Nothing to do with she being Asian. She just knows, okay? Second point is that stereotypes are weep upon from the outside. That's I right. never bought it. I don't care what they say about me because I know who my friends are. Okay, I know what they represent. I know how powerful they are as people. So whatever they say on the outside, take a hike, man. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what we do here 
you know, is reinforced, reinforced, you know, all of the the characters that are three dimensional, full flushed out characters. Okay, and that came from the writers. Mm -hmm. It didn't come from us. You know, the writers gave us a blueprint, then we fill that and we bring that off the page. And that's what happens. So stereotype. <laughs> that's Thank you, Olivia, most... for teaching me that. <laughs> <laughs> that's... I've never done that in my life. I, I was going to say, one, which form, which form is the yeah. double middle finger? <laughs> which form did you learn when you, when you learned the double middle finger? <laughs> I, don't think um, I think that's the snake. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ty and King, you both play the the matriarch and patriarch of the family, but you're also probably the most famous Chinese American parents in Hollywood, right? Like, King, you were you were in Crazy Rich Asians. Ty, you've been in literally everything, and you know, I wanted to ask as well, like being in being in this show is very similar. I feel like it, it for being in like Crazy Rich Asians or being in The Farewell or Mulan, like we're in a moment where Asian people in America are being seen in all kinds of properties. And Kung Fu, I think is the first hour long drama featuring an entire Asian American cast and like ever, like we've had sitcoms and we have reality mm -hmm. shows now, but we've never had like an hour long, you know, Berlanti verse kind of drama on TV. So that's what's great about this, but it's always like, it's kind of like great, but also kind of wild that it's 2021 and we're still seeing the first blah, blah, blah. But as in that some, in that some, in that crazy. So yeah, as, as folks who've been, you, been doing this for a while, been doing this for a while, how does it feel to mm -hmm. be part of such like groundbreaking things like Kung Fu? That's for both you, Ty and King. It's interesting. Okay, because, ball. Yeah. <laughs> I see every single day on set, like a gift. The gift of time on set and on the screens, at the end of the day, I always feel that the way to bust any sort of uh, negative um, way of appreciating something like stereotyping something, um, the way to bust it is to inundate, you know, the medium with detail, with time. And in Kung Fu, we have this time. We have this time for each of our characters. We have this time on screen as a family, even our individual relationships, you know, mother, daughter, um, sisters, brother uh, or son, father, every single relationship and every single character has the gift of time on screen and we are able to infuse the entire project with detail. And ultimately, I really, really believe that the way to um, forge understanding is with time and with detail. And certainly, you know, on, on this project that is cre created by Christina, we all have that. We all have that time. Mm. Ty? You know, I do not accept any stereotype because that's from the outside in. I don't care about that. That will, I will never let that get in the way. I play my role. It is a character I play. And my feelings always been, I'm not playing this for any audience. I'm playing this for our audience, whoever they are, whoever they may be. Okay, so, and, and I'm on a mission too, because like you said, I've, I've done a lot of these dad roads, you know, and of late, all of them have some kind of angst and, and issues, you know, and, and, and for me, I think it's time for a very positive role model for that Asian dads out there. And that's really important, you know, for me, because I have friends who have kids now, and, and they are dads. And I want them to see a dad that is much more nurturing, much more loving. And he puts his family first, but he doesn't sacrifice his own identity. He is who he is. And, and I mean, he's, a, he's like Popeye, right? 
I am what I am, right? <laughs> so that's how things are with, with me. You know, I, I don't let that stereotype bullshit get in the way. Nice. You know, I say you are just you. That's your that's your problem, not mine. So that's how I approach it. Thanks, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, shouts to Christina because you know you you are the creator of the show. You wrote the pilot, and I actually wanted to talk about the the production of the pilot because I think you guys started it before COVID hit. I, you know, you were filming it and then COVID hit, and I think you had to even suspend filming a little bit to, before you came back. And there's a you know and the show comes out next week or the, the show comes out on April 7th and you know, we're in the, this kind of epidemic of not just a virus, but a lot of a, a anti-Asian sentiment in just everyday life. And there's a scene in the pilot that's not necessarily related, but you know, with all of the news going on, seeing Ty like beat on the ground hits different in April, 2021 than it might have when you were filming it in February 2020. So Christina, when you were writing the show, like did, you know, COVID was not in in the in the mindscape at all, but like as you're as you're going on like, you know, and you see the rise of anti-Asian sentiment, like did that affect the writing of the show at all or was there was it just hard to kind of keep that at bay and, and just stay in the fictional world of the Shen family? Um, well, from the get-go, I wanted to make sure that our show was representative of not just one family, but different slices of life and what it's like to be Asian American. And unfortunately, you know, this rise in anti-Asian sentiment is not new. Um, that it's something that we have all experienced, unfortunately, in one form or another. So even from early on, you know, early discussions with my writers, I wanted to make sure that we touched upon it. Certainly with everything that has happened recently, we, we've talked about it more in the room, but in an early episode, we do, we do address it in, in our Kung Fu way um, of just how as Asian Americans, we live with this racism. We, we live with, you know, we have to sort of manage what's going on in the world. And, and I think we do you know, a good job of showing how it's part of our life, how we deal with it. We don't make a huge deal of it, but it is an issue for sure. And something that we think about, we think about our safety. Um, you know, we think about our, our parents' safety, especially in this world right now. Um, so, so certainly it's on our minds and we don't want to ignore it. It's very important to talk about. Olivia, what was it like shooting the scene and then kind of like watching it back, you know, a year later? When 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 the uh, world is kind of a little bit different from what it was when you when you first shot it, like you said, it hits different in April <laughs> twenty twenty one um, because you see these videos and these reports, and you you just plug your own parents or your aunts and uncles into that equation, and it it it's terrifying and it's horrifying, um, and. And I'm, it's, 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 it's scary. It's just scary and it, it's gonna hit different. And I think um, it's pretty crazy that Christina had written something so poignant before. I mean, everything about our show right now, it's like the timing of it is, is truly crazy. Um, John has a line in the pilot that really um, took me, like took my breath away because it it was something that I had never heard verbalized, but had I had always felt, which was um, we're invisible to the police. Um, and I like I've always felt it, but I've never verbalized it. And it, it never occurred to me that this was a common thread that all Asian Americans, Asian people in America felt. Um, and so that line is like hits even harder in April 2021. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've, I've spoken like in circles, but <laughs> doing, doing those scenes and now looking back on them in this lens, in this context, um, it just makes our show feel even more important. Mm -hmm. And your cast put out a recent video kind of speaking out against the anti-Asian sentiment. Like what, what prompted that? And, and do you feel that like, you know, as you said, the moment for this show is kind of, I mean, it's kind of finding opportunity in crisis, but it, it is kind of perfect because 
one of the things we've been talking about is this notion of seeing Asian people as human, because until this point, unfortunately, the problem is Asian people in Hollywood, in you know, TV and movies has never been seen as human. And, and what's the one thing Kung Fu is doing is, is showing that these are human beings who, who live lives. And perhaps by putting that out on primetime television, it shows the world that Asian Americans are also human are also people. Do you think this is the perfect opportunity to kind of like share these stories with the broader television viewing public? 100% because first of all, it's on the CW. I mean, that's a whole demographics that I don't think we have enough access to, you know, and that's really important. The, the fact that we're on the CW, that, that's significant, I think. The stories we tell, I tell you, I saw a picture, I think yesterday on, on me lying on the ground, I tell you, I, it gave me chills, man. And I think it will resonate, you know, throughout because we have seen so many images. They're so horrific that, that I think by what we're doing and we're, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to plug the show, I mean, this is a total package. The total package is that you are seeing a family in its fullest glory and fullest problems. It is a family. You will see the universality of what a family goes through. And, and I don't want to give anything away because we cover a lot of things in our family, you know, and, and, and we, we also deal in very specific ways culturally what happens in this family and that i think is significant these are very important points you know for the general audience to see but also for ourselves this show is for ourselves too this is something we it is our gift to the asian american community i feel because we don't see enough of it and we want to see more. And we're just the beginning. We're just the tip of the iceberg. And that's what we want, you know. And, if, and, and we will move forward from here. And I tell you, when you see the season progresses, you will see that we cover a lot more than I think even we realize. Because <laughs> we cover communities around Chinatown. And what happens to those folks? and how Nikki as a conduit to those worlds, because she has a mission. And it's not a bad time to have a show that has martial arts, that shows that we can kick some ass. <laughs> so let these guys out there think twice. Don't even come our way, I'm telling you now, because we'll bust you. <laughs> Eloquently said. Um, Olivia, just on that, you know, as you said, you you tried to avoid martial arts roles in the past, but once you got cast here, of course, you had to go through, I'm sure, strenuous training regiment to to get to Nikki Shen levels of kung fu. What was what one? What was that like? And two, do you feel like, as Ty said, you could kick some ass now if uh, you were step two on the street? <laughs> um, yep, I essentially went through like a, a hardcore boot camp of uh, uh, Kung Fu and, uh, and martial arts and, and basics, just so that I could have a good foundation. Um, I, I really wanted to work hard and do it right because I know that this is very important to us, very respected. There are real masters out there and I wanna make them proud. Um, so yeah, it, it was kind of a, a boot camp situation just to get me ready for the season and the series beyond. Um, and yeah, a daily thought that I have now is how can I translate some of this fight choreography that I learned <laughs> the streets in case someone tries to come up on me. <laughs> so like, as I'm walking around, I'm literally thinking like, okay, if I did this and then that, like if someone comes up behind me, I, I know what to do. I can flip them over. Okay. Um, as long as they also know the choreography, but um, no, I do, I do feel so much more empowered. Um, mm. Playing Nikki has made me want to stand up for myself, not just physically take up space, but like she speaks up and she speaks out for people. And um, it's it's really inspired me to translate that into 
my personal life as I look around my community and I and I see that we're hurting and I'm like and and I don't want to sit idly by and just let that happen um Nikki has really inspired me to to take a stand mm -hmm. uh, Shannon and Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just going to say. First of all, Olivia's a powerhouse. She's amazing with the stunts and how hard she works, and it's incredible. Um, and I'm just so excited that there's going to be a young generation of kids, girls especially, who are going to turn on the TV and see Olivia playing Nikki Shen, who's strong, smart, can defend herself. You know, is fighting for justice. Like I didn't have that growing up watching American television, and I'm so excited that you know she's going to be a role model to so many people. So I just wanted to say that. No, yeah, definitely. Nikki Shen when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, to that point, Shannon and John, I, you know there are several scenes where where Nikki kicks a ass, and and you're present to to witness, and and John has a great reaction in one of those scenes as well, but. You know, and seeing Nikki and the Sun people do the do their uh, fight choreography. Did you ever like go to Christina? Like, hey, in the future, can you think you could write some? Uh, Ryan becomes a martial artist as well, just so I can kick some ass. Or Althea, <laughs> do you feel like wh when do I get to spin kick somebody? Oh, uh, you mean, dude, I'm open to anything, and I think this is a great <laughs> forum to bring this up now, Christina. So, uh, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, Ryan has been. John's have, been hitting have, the stunts gym and practicing some kicks. Well, because I, it, it's a privileged position to be in to have access to such like phenomenal people in the industry. And I just love being around them because they're so good at what they do with diverse mixes of martial arts. Um, and so I just find enjoyment in being there with them. And then if I get to train with them and do a couple of kicks and learn a bit of that, like, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm open for anything. I, 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 I'm totally hearing this. I I just have to say this cast surprises me every day in when I see the dailies, when I see the cuts, because they just have so much talent. It's not just the acting and the emotion. There's comedy. Like everyone can sing and dance. Like I see you guys. You think wait, I'm not? Wait, music, are, is there a musical episode coming up? Is that what you're saying, Christina? Are we I, doing I the musical episode? We're pushing with, with, with Shannon front and center. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I want like a dancing musical for just for you. <laughs> but, I mean, there's a great karaoke scene in the pilot. I'm just saying, King, King Hua. <laughs> yeah. Keith, hold on. You know, little teaser. Oh, you get to see some moves. You know, <laughs> uh -huh. you get to see some moves, right, Papa? <laughs> Uh huh. We'll let it unveil. Stay tuned, is all I'm saying. Yeah, stay I, tuned. absolutely. Oops. Yeah. No, what I was going to say was that one of the greatest pleasures about being on Kung Fu is the amount of freedom that we get to explore so many different aspects of all our characters. You know, and I think that is really wonderful to see. So we don't just put forward something that is good, 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 good all, all the time. You actually see the characters working things out. Maybe they started somewhere, you know, less knowing, and then you see them working through the problems. And I, I think that is very, very precious for any audience. And it's that sort of character development that actually helps make any story universal. I mean, I go on set nowadays and and I say this as a compliment. To me, it isn't just, you know, an all Asian cast or whatever. I mean, I just see a bunch of people telling really great stories and just going going on to set, like what we're gonna do later, and just basically living these wonderful lines. We're so excited to get the lines. I mean, every time we open up our email inboxes and we see like, oh, production, you know, draft, episode 12, literally, Keith, my heart starts to pump. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. And I have stood in the middle of the road, opened up my the file and literally like, oh, I need to look at this. I need to look at this. And I'm hoping, you know, that's the sort of reaction that the audience is going to get as well, you know. I mean, to that point, I, I wonder for for a lot of you, as you know, you've, you you're all veterans in the business, and for the most part, you've done shows and you've done films where you're the only one. 
Does it ever like hit you when you're on set and you look around and you think to yourselves like, wow, I see my people. And and not not that it's like a constant thought, but like, does it ever hit you where you're like, you're not the only one on set anymore? And and what and can you describe what that feeling was like when you when you had that feeling when you're standing there, looking at each other and thinking, you know, oh, I remember we, what it's like being on that one set when, <laughs> <laughs> when there was nobody that looked like me. You know what it is? It's like when you get into this situation, you know you don't have to keep on explaining yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's right. When I say something, they all know what I'm talking about. I don't have to go, oh, well, because that's like this. Oh, yeah, what well, that his, means. His that. sweatshirt being a prime example. Hello. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, but really, it's just, it's just, I, well, I welcome that shorthand. I really do. You know, because I, I, I'm not a guy who sit around and like to explain shit. I just don't. <laughs> I just want, I really want, the, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have fun. And, and I'm telling you, these guys over here, they have fun, okay? I just want to say, I mean, you haven't seen nothing yet, really. I mean, it's a pleasure to be around these guys because, you know, I mean, everybody expects, ah, you know, he's, he's the old man on the show, so, you know, people will be asking him this and that. I said, no, man, I'm learning. I'm in a situation where I'm looking at this younger generation and what they bring to the table. And I'm telling you, our future is bright. And that's mm -hmm. what I got to say. And if you all better share this with us because they're going to grow up and you're going to miss something. I'm telling you, better <laughs> get on the train and keep up with us because you don't. You're going to be missing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'd like to say something and um, about, you know, sort of coming onto set and, and, and seeing um, people of people that I relate to. And that is that, you know, I actually come from Singapore. So mm. I am, I mean, my entire career, I've gone on to set and I've seen, you know, my Singaporeans and I've shared screen time with, you know, so many of, I guess, my own people. But one of the powerful things about being on Kung Fu is that every day that I'm on set and with the current affairs that are going on, I'm really smacked in the face at how important it is to be on a project that has such great relevance to everything that is going on now. And that sort of relevance really gives a project like this a shine, you know, an energy, a purpose. And I think that sort of an energy makes for really a wonderful feeling on set of being a part of something that is important, you know, right now. Well said, and, Olivia. And and I think um, just to speak to previously in, in other projects, maybe all of us have been the, the one Asian. Um, there was so much pressure to, to be, to, to represent well, being the only one there. And to be on this set where we're all Asian for the most part, just, you get to spread that pressure around and you don't feel the need to be everything to every single Asian because that's impossible. So like if someone doesn't see themselves in Nikki, they can see themselves hopefully in Althea, in Ryan, in Jin, in Meili, in Henry, in Dennis, you know, so many different Asians to, to relate to um, because we're not just showing one dimension of of us there are so many um sides of us and so many facets and um and and that's what feels really special too is is to be able to sh like share the the pressure and the load <laughs> john shannon um i echo everything that kang and olivia and ty just said um i think What's also a lovely reminder of how special this is and how uh, meaningful this is to people is w recently when all of our you know spots and commercials are popping up on TV and I'll get random texts from uh, family members or friends in the Asian American community who are so excited for this and saying that they have April seventh marked down to watch with their entire family like and and, and just to be able to bring that together and bring that to the community it like oh 
it hits every single time. And I'm like, thank you so much. This is for everyone. This is for you guys. I just so like, I cannot believe we get to do this and share this with everyone. And I think that also contributes to uh, like our love and our chemistry on and off camera is everyone, um, we have this understanding that this project is special and that we're doing this. And um, I, I, it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> You know, given the present condition that we're in, I tell you, sometimes I go to set and I look around as if I wasn't on this set, it's really difficult to go to work mm -hmm. with what's been happening to us. Mm -hmm. And when I go to set now, if this wasn't the set I'm in, I feel, I feel supported. Mm -hmm. I feel that when I walk into this room, I'm surrounded with people who know what I'm going through. And and hence, you know, we had the PSA. Hence, we have Warner Brothers so generously donated money to Asian American organization to fight what's what's facing us at, in a tune of $7 million. I mean, this is what we're talking about, that our family, our Kung Fu family created that atmosphere that we are contributing not only creatively, not only for our audience and a show of entertainment and excitement, but we are doing everything that we know how to support what we're doing in the community. And, and you cannot find a better platform for all of us to do our part in the community. And if that's not significant, then I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. Ty, I would love to add to what you said, and you always say that um, our show and us being actors is a form of activism in itself. So mm -hmm. I love. That. No, that that that's, that's right. actually really really good point because I think oftentimes people dismiss pop culture, entertainment as trivial, but what they don't realize is those are the stories and narratives that inform how people see each other, right? Mm -hmm. Like we yeah. we have a view of. Asian people because of how Asian people have been depicted in Hollywood for generations. That's why stereotypes, uh, to, to Ty's point earlier, stereotypes exist because that's all that you're given. And, mm -hmm. you know, from f no matter what marginalized group you come from, if the only stories that you see are, you know, Black people are violent, Asian people are subhuman, that's the message that gets uh, right. in internalized by people. So a police mm -hmm. officer shoots a Black man on the street because he has this internalized narrative that black people are mm -hmm. inherently violent. Mm -hmm. Asian people get beat on the street and people turn their backs and close their doors because Asian Americans don't speak up. That's the stereotype. And so that's mm -hmm. all because of stories. It's all because of the things we read, the things we see on screen. And you know, the, the conversation of representation is usually about what's on screen. And Christina, I wanted to ask you as someone who's behind the screen, yeah. you know, as a, as a writer, as a showrunner, as an executive producer, there's not enough representation as a, back boss. There. as a boss. There's not enough representation back there. And how can we, you know, this is one of the few shows that has an Asian American showrunner. No, how I, can I, we? Yeah, it's, um, I am usually the only one as well. And Olivia, you right. on the head because, you know, there's a lot of pressure where you're the only Asian American person on a writing staff, usually one of only a couple women as well. So when I got this opportunity, it was, you know, on screen, obviously, like I representation is so important and doing it right. And, um, but behind the screen, starting with the writer's room, it was really important to me that I gave opportunities to Asian American writers. Um, five out of our 10 writers are of Asian um, descent. Five are women. It's very even, you know, I've never been in a room like this. It's so exciting. Um, also on, on set, like it was really important that I gave women opportunities to run departments, to be, you know, our director of photography, our, we have female directors, our um, composer, you know, our production designer, like that, that also is sending a message. And also, you know, there's just so many talented women and people of color who sometimes don't get opportunities. So for me, that was that was one of my you know imperatives going into this that I finally had deciding power, and and that was for what I wanted to do. Anyone else? Just clone us. 
<laughs> yeah. I have to say too, like even I'm not on camera, but I had a moment of being on set where I got goosebumps, teary chills, and it was the first time seeing this beautiful cast doing a camera test. And you know, for me, because I've been living in the pilot script for so long, developing it, writing it, pitching it, all of that, um, you guys were already part of my mind and my family. And and it was just like you you were already part of it. So to see you all bringing it to life and being on camera and sitting in video village and seeing your faces on the monitor, I, it hit me that oh my gosh, the world is gonna see this one day hopefully. And and yes, now it's happening. Um, and it was a very different image than anything I'd ever seen. You know, working in TV for many many years. It's, it's you know, if I'm if I was lucky, I always tried to put one Asian American character in. I would slip them in. But again, it's small roles, and here it was like the whole screen. So that was my moment on set of realizing this is really special. I'd like no, to it's, chime it's in. fantastic. You know, I'd like to chime in here um, and pick up about what Christina said about the whole world is going to see this. I come from a different country, and I can't wait for my own country to see uh, Kung Fu, and I'll tell you why. Because despite the fact that I come from a country which is predominantly Asian. Um, what being on Kung Fu has taught me is to never take safety um, and security and walking on the street and not being afraid for granted. Because, I mean, you know, I have traveled all over the world and worked all over the world, but for the first time in my life, I get these worried texts from my 84 year old mother because she reads the news and she's worried for me. And that feeling is horrible. My friends text me and they read the news and they are like, Kang, are you okay? Because they know that I'm alone and they know that, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm walking on the street, I, I have to go to the supermarket, etc. cetera. And, and they're afraid. And I'm just so glad that at least on this particular platform that we show how to overcome some of these fears in a detailed and very honest way, you know, yeah. No, that's beautifully said. Um, the one, there's one detail in Kung Fu that I think, I don't know if any other moderator will ask you this question because I think it's, it's the one detail that I clinged on to because anyone who listens to my podcast know I'm obsessed with this topic, but Jin is a Chinese restaurateur on on the show and i read that ty you grew up in an american chinese restaurant like i did and uh -huh. i i have an affinity for american chinese food i know a lot of people look at american chinese food and think oh that's not authentic that's not it's fake but i i feel like american chinese food is one of the most asian american things there is you know like <laughs> chow mein and general so's chicken so i just wanted to ask you like did you use any of your prior knowledge growing up in a chinese restaurant to inform how you played jen on kung fu Man, every bit of it because <laughs> I've, I'm, I've done every job in a restaurant. I'm telling you, every job. So you see me a carrier tray, I'm a professional. You see me <laughs> sterling the walk, I'm a professional. You, you see, see me, me nodding? Yeah, you see. <laughs> I'm telling you. And and and, and when Kang's in the kitchen, because I know she's a monster cook, right? So I watch her, and you see she got skills, man. So yeah. you, you, really every, every bit of it, you know, walking in the restaurant, I know every step, I know which door to go in, which door to come yeah, man. out. I, I, I've never okay. been so told off before for walking through the wrong door. <laughs> you got so I make sure to walk through the right door. Through the left. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. Police, so. the restaurant police. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just watching um, uh, the most recent cut. I think it was, oh gosh episode eight or nine, your chopping skills, Ty, in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about your background. And it was like, I was like, did they speed up the camera? It was like, <laughs> 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 yeah, he knows what he's talking about. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, so I, I'm I, really quite at home, you yeah. know, in that environment. And and uh, we're, we're in there a lot. So yeah. it, it's nice to be at home. When, right. when you spend so much time on that. And that set is, you know, dope, I'm telling you. 
No, it's great. Some I, stuff I, going on. <laughs> I just, I, I was just flooded with memories. So I, and, and when I knew, yeah, yeah. when I read about your background, I was like, I had to ask you about it because again, I grew up <laughs> in a Chinese restaurant too, and uh -huh. I wanted to ask uh -huh. you what your favorite dish was, but I'm, I, we might go down a rabbit hole that we don't. Oh yeah, to. no, no, we don't want to go there, man. <laughs> I mean, but you should. But next time, pay attention. You know, when you see the restaurant scene, you should see the menu on the wall. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna see some stuff, man. Nice. I'm telling, you, check out the menu on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> So I, as we get as we get close to the end of the panel, I just wanted to give everyone an opportunity to to tell the, the folks who are watching right now, like, what is the one thing you want them to take away from not just this pilot episode, but from the entire season and hopefully seasons beyond or when they watch Kung Fu? And we'll go around. We'll start with Christina. What is the one takeaway you want people to have from from watching Kung Fu? I think the one takeaway that I want people to have is this is a this is a family and we happen to be an Asian family, but we're a family that's relatable, that's got problems that you can, as Olivia said, you can see yourself in, in each of these characters. And I hope that people will, you know, relate to us, will connect to us on that level as, as people. Um, and of course, representation, having this be an Asian American family is also very, very important, but I'm really just excited for the world to fall in love with the Shen family. Olivia? I hope people have a good ass time. I hope they they finish every episode being like, I need the next episode because I need to know what happens. Because you know, our show is so fun. We have action, adventure, mystery, mythical elements. We've got weapons, we've got comedy, we've got people falling in love. I mean, we cover so many aspects of human life. And we have a lot of fun doing it. And I hope that people just finish every episode, uh, each episode every week, just being like, wow, I just had a really good time and I can't wait for the next one. Awesome. Shannon? I would love um, for our show to just bring families together. And um, every night after they watch, I want people to feel uplifted and um, create those memories together, uh, laughing, crying. Um, there's a lot of action, everything. I, I, I would hope that multiple generations can grow up and grow to love our show and the Shen family and everyone in it together and create those memories. John? Um, Ma'am, I'm just gonna echo what Olivia said. Like, I want them to take away the joy that we felt when we filmed it, because we do have so much fun from like the heavy scenes to the uh, really lighthearted scenes. Um, I'd love for them to take that joy and use it for good. Ty? I echo for all the top panels right on top, <laughs> every word they say. And I just want the audience to celebrate us because it is for our community too. This show is also a gift to our community. You know, you, you will see our woman warriors, you know, out there representing, and you're gonna see father and son relationship that I don't believe you can, you have ever seen on the small or the big screen. I can't wait for the audience to see that. And for husband and wife that we, go through, we, we see the obstacles in front of us and we try to do our best. It doesn't mean we succeed all the time. It doesn't mean we fail all the time, but we keep on trying and we want people to see that. Nice. And Ken, you have the last word. I want the audiences to feel great love because I feel it every single day in so many different ways on set, behind the scenes, in front of the camera, with each other. I want them to love every aspect of the show, fall in love with it, and to feel the sort of love that I feel permeating throughout this entire production from the top all the way down. And it is a very, very genuine and positive sort of environment. And I truly believe that when you have that sort of love behind the scenes that the audiences will really feel it. Um, and that's what I would like them to feel, yeah. Well, I can't wait for the world to watch Kung Fu either. I wanna celebrate you guys 
for for putting it together, uh, Christina for writing an amazing pilot, and for the, for the actors for portraying such a lovely, amazing group of people. Kung Fu premieres on the CW April seventh at eight p.m. Thank you to Cape and thank you to the CW and Warner Brothers for hosting this panel. And uh, thank you thank to you Keith. Guys. Thank, yeah, thank you. Thanks, thank Keith. You. You're so awesome. <laughs> and, thank uh, you, Keith. Hope you guys tune, tune in to uh, Kung Fu on Wednesday, April 7th. See you mm -hmm. later.